What is up, guys? And welcome back to another wrestling podcast here. And we're talking about WrestleMania 37. Obviously, it's called 37, but yet yeah, WWE would just rather call it WrestleMania. But that's just Vince being Vince. But anyways, I did not come alone tonight. This time, well, you might know him. He's been on the podcast, but I thought I'd let him introduce himself. So take it away. Da, 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 da. Did you really? I'm an ink Bruce. Did you really have to do Space Jam because of that? Yes, dude. Have you not seen the new trailer? The yep. new trailer was lit. I know, I know, I get it. But anyways, guys, we have Bruce. It's WrestleMania, so I'm just glad that he's able to be back. And I know he. I mentioned before in the podcast that he went through a little bit of struggles, but Bruce, I'm just glad that you're finally back on here. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be back. I honestly kind of miss doing these. I'm glad that you guys continued the the podcast without me because if anything, I've never really done this type of stuff. Like, I guess for me, I've always done it for you and for your fans. And just because I enjoyed this and I had I legitimately have fun talking about wrestling with you and, and Josh and whoever else you decide to add onto the podcast. Just I enjoy doing these and I miss doing these and it's great to be back here on podcast with sean cheap pop oh, and uh but yeah <laughs> it's great to be back and uh i'm ready to rock and roll all right so without any further ado let's start off with wrestlemania 37 night one and for some reason they started off with the very first match of the night i know they had a little bit of weather difficulties and i get it it's an open stadium but the thing is why did they start off this match like this is this is a kickoff. Well, not necessarily a kickoff, but technically a kickoff to WrestleMania. But I'm like, why did they have to start off this match with the WWE Championship? I will never understand because that is terrible booking. But it is Drew McIntyre going against the WWE Champion Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley was able to pick up the win and still retain his WWE Championship. So Bruce, as usual, I'm usually the one that goes last on my opinion. So go ahead. First off, I love this match. This match was awesome. Like, this match made me have a newfound appreciation for both Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre, both in-ring competitively. And, you know, just, oh my goodness, these guys were brutal, just beating the heck out of each other. As Corey Graves would call it, a car wreck, but it's a car crash in a good way. And... You know, bout for bout, it seemed like they were evenly matched. The beginning, I'll admit, was a little slow, but like I'd say like the first quarter of it was kind of slow. It was kind of eh. But like towards like I guess like second quarter of the match onward, that's when it had me. It clicked. I went, okay, now I'm on board. And this was a really great match. It was a really great opener. You know, I know you're a little salty because it's the WWE championship. I understand. It's worthy of a main event, but I thought as an opening match, this was very, this was awesome. And I can actually see your valid points on it, and I can actually respect to see what Drew, Mc, Drew McIntyre was talking about, and I get it. And there were fans in the arena, which was good. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still think it's kind of a, a kind of a risky move. But Josh told me that they did do some precautions with the audiences to make sure that everyone isn't in a safe environment. So I guess I can take that, but um. This match was all right. It was not my favorite match of the night, but it was decent with some technical moves. And like you did say, it did start off kind of slow at first. But man, there were times where I guess I was just salty because it's the first match of the night. And like you said, it's a WWE Championship. You should be treated more properly like that. And 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 my mom even pointed this out when they were fighting. There were some weird shot, uh, camera shots on the turnbuckle when they were going for a suplex, and they kept changing the camera back and forth, back and forth, like it was like nonstop. And I'm like, just leave it at one single camera angle, and yet they don't even do that. But for some odd reason, yeah, I did not know who who were they gonna put over because I thought this was kind of like bad booking in a way because you have Bobby Lashley, he's a heel. But the thing is, you know, everyone wants to heal or lose because that that's the role of the bad guy. And you got Drew McIntyre. But the thing is, I was surprised that that Drew was passed out due to the hurt lock, which I thought that was a surprising ending because I did not know who was going to win. But 
I thought this was kind of a little iffy because I'm like, who you put over, Bobby or Drew? But I think probably what's best for business right now is probably uh, the best thing to do is put Bobby over, and that is maybe the only decent option because he just won the title, so you just can't just take it off him instantly because, I mean, he is a hard worker. He's very talented. Not so good on the mic, but I do think it was the right choice to put Bobby over. What would your grade rating be? Uh, for my grade rating, it's it, like I said, this was a decent match. So I'm just going to give it a 7 out of 10. Maybe you might have it higher than me, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll give it a 7.5 because I really liked it. Okay. It's so not the best, but it's still very good for an opener and for a WWE Championship match in general. Okay, so we have it pretty much close around that area. Anyways. Yeah. On to our second match of the night. It is the Women's Tag Team Turmoil match. The winner receives a WWE Women's Tag Team Championship on night two against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. And the team of Natalia and Tamina were able to pick up the win by eliminating the Riot Squad. So, Bruce, what was your opinion on this? This match was meh, honestly. Like, it wasn't a bad match, but this match could have easily been... This is the only match that I'll say that was the weakest match out of the card because every other match I loved, but this match was the weakest one. So spoiler alert, this match was the weakest match on the card. This match could have honestly been on SmackDown or raw or whatever. This wasn't worthy of a pay-per-view match, much less a WrestleMania match. It was just meh. I don't, I can't even remember a spot or anything that the women did. So yeah, there's, there's that. And, it just didn't do it for me. Uh, for me, you're going to be uh, shockingly surprised what I'm about to say right now. And it, and it does sound disrespectful to the women's division, but I have to be honest with myself because I cannot hold back. If a match sucks, it sucks. So I'm what? not, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say this. You want to know back then when, when, when the women's, uh, they were called divas back then. Divas. And, and, and back then the women, they're, Let they're, me guess. You took a pee break. This match was pretty much a bathroom break. This match sucked, <laughs> and I literally had to be honest about that. This no, is... I won't. Don't blame you. I probably would have gotten gotten DoorDash, or I would have been eating, or I probably would have been on my phone. I was pr pretty much on my phone looking at toys the whole time. <laughs> But, yeah, I get it. This was a pee break match. This was a pee break match, and that's the first time I've had with a women's match since the, since the Divas era, and that is sad because usually as much as we care about women's matches, this match I did not give two hoots about. And that is just that is just pretty much pathetic. The only thing that was entertaining were the botches. And, look, you had Mandy Rose had an entrance slip. You had the announcer call out the wrong elimination. I'm just like, what? The what? And then... um. It, that was the only entertaining part. The botches. This literally deserves to be on Botchamania, but that was it. If it wasn't for the botches, none of this would have been good. I mean, it's still not good to begin with, but it was just entertaining just to see people screw up, even though it's live. And that was... I also think that the, the wrong women's team won, because if you notice in the crowd, the Riot Squad was the one that got the they small were over. pop. They were over, but yet they gave it to Tamina and Natalia, and I'm like, I didn't expect them to win because they haven't done anything with them. But I'm like, why not get the right squad over? But obviously yeah. the wrong team won. Yeah, like the Riot Squad, they've been doing awesome. I'm even, I love the Riot Squad. It's like, I don't get, how do you not see that they're over, dude? It's so frustrating. To me, they're like the Rockers from like the late 80s. They were super over. The fans love them. You know, Sean and Marty, you know, they were just super over with the fans, especially the girls. The Riot Squad, they're over with the guys. You know, they're full of talent, and they, they've they never given them a shot at any title, uh, any tag team title matches. It's, I don't know, dude. So what would you give this rating for the match? Because honestly, I, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. I was going to give it a 3. Ooh, so a, a little bit, I'm a little harsher, but... Then again, we're kind of close in, in the same boat, so pretty much for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third match of the night, which this is a dream match on paper because I have wanted to see a match like this for quite a while, but we finally got it at WrestleMania, so we have Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. 
Cesaro was finally able to pick up not just his first win at WrestleMania, but also his first singles match at WrestleMania. So he had his little nice moment. So Bruce, take it away. This was fantastic. This immediately uh, redeemed WrestleMania after the the gauntlet match with the tag team uh, with the women's tag team division. Uh, but this was fantastic. You know, this is a fantastic match. You know, going bout for bout, it made you seem like. Also, I see you, Seth Rollins, with that new entrance theme. The the new entrance theme is pretty darn cool. But, yeah, it made it seem like Seth Rollins would once again pull something out of his sleeve and just hit the curb stomp and get the W. But, no, Cesaro fired back. He's just like, no, you are not going to win. I love the story. I love everything about it, like how Cesaro's like keeps coming back and Seth Rollins keeps trying to put him down. It was just fantastic. It told a cohesively good story. And to see the emotion on Cesaro's face after finally getting his first singles win, he's already 40 and they're doing this now. It's baffling that this barely happened just now. But the fact that it finally happened for him, it's a dream come true. I wanted to hug Cesaro and be like, dude, congrats. You killed it out there. You and Seth Rollins, you know, they both killed it. And I was happy. This is a really good match. You pretty much took the words right out of my mouth because everything you just said was right. And I am like thinking, finally, Cesaro is getting everything that we've wanted. For, uh, I think ever, ever since when he came to WWE, like what, like 10 years ago? Has it been 10 years? No, it's been, good Lord. How? Probably, yeah, because he was in NXT. I think he came to WWE like in 2012 or 2013. I could be wrong. So don't quote me on that, guys. But, yeah. But I'm just glad that Cesaro is finally able to have his WrestleMania moment. Hopefully, this is not just this is not just a one-time thing because Vince is, like, saying, oh, we, we just need somebody over because that's just it. And fans just do this one time and that's it. But, no, I'm like, hopefully this is still a continuation and that they mm -hmm. build up Cesaro even more because he deserves plenty. He's one of the strongest wrestlers in the WWE. He's, he's full of talented, and he's worked his ass off. But the thing is, like, this should this should keep continuing on even till maybe even next year's WrestleMania. I want to see Cesaro in the WWE Championship uh, title opportunity. So that is pretty much what I got to say about it. And yeah, huh? Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say. I was also just gonna say that there were some even impressive moves that Cesaro did, like when he was spinning uh, Seth around with his no hands. I was like, okay, now this is entertaining. <laughs> and here he is spinning Cesaro. I mean, here he is. Uh, and here he is spinning Seth Rollins around with um, like 23 times, even though I've seen better. I, I've seen him done it a hundred times, but who, but who's complaining? Well, but, I'm, I'm pretty uh, sure. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure things are finally looking up for him. And hopefully this is, this is just the beginning and we see more for Cesaro. So what would you give your rating for this match? I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. This was very, very good. You know, it was very good, solid story. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm actually going to be uh, shocking you because I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just liked it a little bit much more than you, so. I don't blame you. This was fantastic. Our fourth match of the night is the Raw Tag Team Championships on the line with New Day defending their titles against the team of AJ Styles and the debut of Omas. AJ Styles and Omos were able to get the win and become the new Raw Tag Team Championship. So, Bruce, what were your thoughts on this? I really liked this match. This match was, it was entertaining. It wasn't the best tag team match, really. And I don't know, you could argue this maybe could have been on SmackDown, but I like this match a lot. You know, the story that New Day, New Day was stopping AJ Styles from tagging in Omos, and then Omos comes in looking like a beast, just beating every, beating the heck out of Kofi Kingston. And I love – this match made me a fan of Omos because the way how Omos looks and the way how he sold things, it reminded me a lot of Andre the Giant because Andre no-sold the way how Omos no-sold. And the chemistry with him and AJ, you know, big man, little guy, it kind of reminded me of like Sean and Diesel – in a way. And I just, I don't know. I just, I love their chemistry. I love the, the pacing and everything that they did in this match. They just, 
you know, I'm pretty sure they knew that they, it wouldn't be like the most entertaining, but I think that, I mean, not like the most high riveting, I should say, but I think that their goal was to make it as entertaining as possible and to make Omos look as good as possible. And they succeeded. Omos is a beast and I want to see more of him. And I don't know if he's well-trained or not, but once he, something tells me once he becomes well-trained, he's going to rock and roll. And I hope he does, you know, but yeah, I love this match. This was pretty cool. This match, I'm a little iffy about it because when, okay, they obviously did tell a good cohesive story. Like you just said, they were trying to, uh, New Day was trying to play a little bit of defense to make sure that Omos does not get tagged in. And AJ Styles is like trying his best to make sure that he, he tags in Omos because that's like the key to their success. So I did like the entertaining story that they had behind it. And it looked like that New Day had the advantage. But when I saw Omos wrestled, I was the opposite. I mean, I haven't seen Andre the Giant wrestle as much as probably maybe as much as you did. But the thing was, when I saw him fight, it was kind of underwhelming because I'm like, they had all these months to build him up and yet they didn't even, and and they didn't even give him enough time to practice wrestling. But you're probably going to hate me for this, but his wrestling style reminded me a bit of the great Kali. Mm. I understand. And I'm thinking, like, Omos can't... If, if this is the best that Omos can do and they're not going to improve on him, I'm thinking Omos can't wrestle. And that's sad because you got a seven-foot-tall giant, and the thing is, he's intimidating. He looks big. He looks good. But the issue is he just doesn't... It doesn't look like he has the wrestling talent for it. And I kind of noticed that it's been a trend with seven-footers in WWE. They tend not to be the best wrestlers, maybe because of their height the, the differentiation. So maybe that's... yeah. As that's probably a disadvantage for them, but I'm just gonna say I was, I didn't like his performance, and I don't know how I feel about AJ and and Omos being tag team champions because the tag team championships should be valuable. And like I said, I'm probably gonna keep saying that a lot of times in the podcast because I've always said that championships should always be valuable. Maybe it's because I watch so much from NXT. But, but yeah, I don't hate this match, but I don't love it either. So, for my final score, I'm just going to give this match a 5 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7. On to our fifth match of the night. It is the Steel Cage match, which we have not seen a Steel Cage match in WWE for quite a while. And I will not count Hell in a Cell, because Hell in a Cell is a completely different case. But I'm just glad to see one, because I'm a sucker for Steel Cage matches. But I'm just not a sucker when it comes to the storyline. It is Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon. And Braun Strowman was able to pick up the win by tossing Shane McMahon off the cage, which was pretty cool, by the way. I'm not going to lie, even though I heard that it, it it prevented him from getting hurt, which hopefully Shane's okay and all best for him. But Bruce, before I give my opinion, you have the right to go. So go ahead. So I'm just going to get this out of the way. This match had the worst buildup I have, I, oh man, I don't know, this match is probably, oh man, the buildup was so, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna quote Shane McMahon, stupid, this buildup was stupid, I was not looking forward to this match at all, I was ready to just turn my brain off and just be like, eh, these, this match is not going to deliver. This match is going to be trash. It's going to be worst match of the night. Somehow, <laughs> some way, these two crazy guys managed to pull off one of the best matches of the night. I don't know how. I don't know why Shane O'Mac and Braun Strowman brought it home. Oh, well, for that, I cannot help but to think well, if this was me and Josh doing the podcast right now, you would have been cut off way much sooner because Josh hates, hates, hates this storyline. And I hate this storyline just as much as you do. This is one of the worst buildups I've seen for a WrestleMania match because I thought Shane being put into another match instead of putting over young talent is bullshit from the beginning. So I'm like, I did not like this buildup. I don't even know why... The, this match to begin with and the thing is i knew that this match was going to be a squash match from the beginning because and and then again i knew that jay mcmahon's goons were going to attack him because if if that wasn't the case braun Strowman would have kicked his ass within less than 30 seconds so 
I knew that Shane was not going to be able to stand against Braun Strowman, but they had to figure out a new way to make a story to make it last longer and to, instead of being a squash match, but it was still pretty predictable. I thought Shane being thrown off the being thrown off the the, the cage was pretty cool. I, I still hope that he's okay, but the thing was I thought I thought it was gonna be worse. I thought I thought Braun was gonna do a running power bomb off the cage. Yeah, that would have been oh my ugh, ugh. that would have been awesome, but then again I thought that would have been risky too, but I would have cringed at that because it's like, dude, you're power bombing a fifty something year old man. No, you do not need to do this. <laughs> but I knew Braun Strowman was going to win, and this is another bully versus victim storyline that we've seen before. But then again, this match is BS from the beginning. You probably have it much more entertaining than I did. And it was a little entertaining to see Braun ripped to the cage, but regardless of all that, I cannot help but to say that this match was entertaining, but but when you have a BS storyline, it's not that good. So for my score, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I'm going to give it a... Why the heck not? I'm going to give it a, an 8, because I really liked it. <laughs> Our second to last match is a tag team match with Bad Bunny and Damian Priest going against the team of Miz and Morrison. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest were able to pick up the win, and Bad Bunny was able to have his WrestleMania moment. So, Bruce, what do you think about this match? Holy moly, Bad Bunny was awesome in this match. Dude, I want to get this out of the way. I don't know who trained Bad Bunny, but they did an awesome job, and they managed to pull off an awesome match. This match was fun. This match was entertaining. Bad Bunny was awesome, you know, in the ring. I don't, again, I'd have thought somebody like Dr. Tom Pritchard or, or somebody worked with this guy. This guy, oh my goodness. Bad Bunny did a Canadian destroyer. That's an indie move, and he's not a wrestler, and he managed to do a Canadian destroyer outside the ring to John Morrison. When I saw that, I'm like, are you kidding me? You did a Canadian destroyer, and you're not even just – Bad Bunny blew me away. Bad Bunny was awesome in this match. If there was a star player, I would say like – I would probably have to say Miz and Morrison because Miz and Morrison made Bad Bunny look awesome. You know, even though they're the bad guys, they made Bad Bunny look good. And Bad Bunny, for him to have the athleticism that he had to pull off those those moves, it was great. Well, I, I cannot disagree with you because this match was fun and was entertaining. I actually liked it more than I expected it to be. And the thing is that they didn't start off with Damian Priest and and build up the Bad Bunny coming in. No, they literally said, Miz, saying, I want Bad Bunny. And they they, they, they surprised me by saying, we're going to get Bad Bunny to just start off the match against Miz. And Bad Bunny, he sold it. He literally, I mean, he's not a perfect wrestler, but then again, he's just a celebrity. But, but, but like you said, whoever trained him, they did a pretty good job. And Bad Bunny, no, but instead of him selling that, you should also praise Miz. Miz had the best Bunny reaction on mm -hmm. on screen he was li literally putting over everybody he had he had the look for it he had like the shocked face on him and you're like yeah. thinking even my mom is like saying miz is such a good actor in in the ring right like he like that's why i said they were the star players because they did an amazing job at making bad bunny look good which they did and and when I saw the Canadian Destroyer, I literally was shocked. Even Damien Priest <laughs> was having the shocked look on his face. Even he didn't like think that he was capable of doing that. But hey, but uh, but what I'm happy is that Bad Bunny, he's been a, a longtime WWE fan or just a wrestling fan in general. And because of yeah. that, he's a, he's at least able this one time to to fulfill his dream as a wrestler. I mean, he's not a full-time wrestler because he's a singer, but at least he's able to pull that off his bucket list and say, hey, I went to WrestleMania, I fought in a match, and I was able to look good. And I'll actually say this. I'm going to say that Bad Bunny was probably the best in-ring debut for a celebrity. So what would you give your final score on that? Eight and a half. This was awesome. Um, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 just because I thought it was more entertaining than anything, but I still like the match regardless. Our final match of the night is the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship with Sasha Banks defending her SmackDown Championship against Bianca Belair as both of them make history in the making as they become the first two black women to headline a WrestleMania pay-per-view. 
and you can literally see it on the their look look on their face that they were in awe, but also they were just taking it all in. And I I, I just gotta say, congrats to both Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks for making history on that. They obviously deserved it. But Bruce, go ahead and say what you gotta say. So I know that you were very salty that the WWE Championship was not in the main event. This match was worthy of a main event match. This was match of the night. This match, you know, deserved to be in the main event after the 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 stuff that they pulled and the match, the story, the just oh my goodness. I I'm at, I'm at a loss for words because this match was amazing. You know, the emotion, the story, the everything going around. It was like the stars were aligned that night for this match to happen. This match was li- literally history in the making. And I'm glad that this was a main event for night one of WrestleMania because it deserved to be the main event. And I'm extremely happy. You know, I hope WWE doesn't begin a trend where – Night one, they have the women's main event match, and then night two, it's somebody it just I hope that doesn't continue. But this match was worthy to be a main event match, and I'm glad that they pulled it off. They told an amazing story. I'm very happy that Bianca Belair finally, and this is her rookie year. She went from being on a cover of I think like fitness, like muscle and fitness, and then having her uh, WWE 24 magazine and then winning the Royal Rumble and then picking in that same exact year, picking up the SmackDown Women's Championship for the first time. I'm beyond proud of Bianca. I wanted to hug her. I just wish nothing but the best for her. And what more can I say? I love this match. Amen to you, because pretty much this match was worthy of a main event, and I'm actually proud of both Bianca and Sasha Banks. But the thing is, I'm not going to critique anything about it, because I thought everything was a good match from beginning to end. And Exactly. I think this was obviously the best match of the night. In in terms of technical wrestling-wise, Bianca Belair does deserve to be SmackDown Women's Champion, although... I may not agree with a lot of things that Vince has done when it comes to his booking and his buildup, but I actually think that she is technically worthy, and I just congratulate to her for this accomplishment. And you can just see the emotion on her face that she really, she really just was all passionate about it. Even though Sasha Banks, I wonder what what scares me about her is because Sasha Banks will without a doubt, become one of the greatest female wrestlers of all time. It's just there already. But the thing is, she has yet to win a WrestleMania. And also, I get it that they're trying to put the young talent over, which is a thing. You you, you should most of the time do it if if it's a good cause. But I also just wonder if this is going to affect Sasha Banks' uh, career reputation. Because, uh, I mean, because the thing is, They've always said that, well, she's a five-time women's champion, but yeah, but only four of those title reigns were completely worthless because she held them for less than a month. And then here she is at WrestleMania, and she has yet to win a match there. So that kind of, it's like you you, you do one good thing, but you kind of mess up another thing. You know what? I never even thought of that. That's a very, very good point, and... I, I don't know. I hope it doesn't do anything to her career. I hope she doesn't get salty uh, because of this. You know, I hope she doesn't like walk out of WWE because of this. And, you know, either way, I don't know. I want nothing. But I wish nothing but the best for Sasha. Well, let's not get too sad about it. I mean, hopefully there is going to be something to come out of it, like find a silver lining to it. But yeah. I'm just going to say it was still a good match. I There there, there are some flaws about it because mo- most matches are never always that perfect. And I just hope that this just doesn't ruin everything else. But overall, they had a good match. And man, when Sasha took that hair whip, man, she took it like a champ. But man, I, that, 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 that slash on her ribs. Ooh, hope she's okay. But, Ugh. That um, welt. Ugh. I know, but. I would give this match a 8.5 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. 
I loved it that much. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for night one of WrestleMania 37. Thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. Uh, thank you also, night Bruce. One, night one, night one. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, you, you know we're gonna come back again for night two because I'm gonna split. Are? Yeah, because I'm gonna split these videos up because there's just so many matches to talk about. Yeah, but 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 but, but what no, about the rest? No, of the media? no, 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 no. Subscribe, subscribe to Sean's channel. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm going to learn how to calm down, Bruce. But anyways, if you like this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. Hey, do you want to know who wins the WWE Championship match? Do, do you want to know who wins the Universal Title match? I can tell you. I can show you. We, we already talked about this. <laughs> but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe here to the channel for more content. I mean, con content. My bad. And if till next time, well, we'll see you in the next podcast. So bye. <laughs>